Can we talk about the gig with John, John Fogarty? How did you get the gig? How did this even come about for you, Bob? Uh, you know, I paid off a guy. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I have my lawyer, who's also a friend of mine, who I've known for 25, 26, since the early 90s. We're both the same age. He was a young guy coming up when, when we met. I was a young guy coming up. He worked for David Braun, who's... Uh, who's now passed away, but he was a really huge entertainment lawyer mm. going all the way back to the 60s. Like Bob Dylan was his client and uh, Robbie Robertson, oh. Janis Joplin was his client. He was at the table when the Beatles broke up. He was like, I think George Harrison's lawyer for the Beatles break. I mean, legendary guy. So, so my guy, you know, worked for him. And then when he retired, he took over the company. Anyway, Fogarty is one of their clients. So uh, they, uh, he calls me up. He goes, um, yeah, I think I, I think I might have got you a gig with John Fogarty. And he might call. No way, really, that's just out of the blue. No one called. And another six months went by. And I didn't think much about it because 99% of uh, stuff doesn't happen, you know, in, in showbiz. Yeah. The stuff that you want to talk about is the 1% of stuff that actually happened, right? right? Sure. That, that's usually the ratio. Right. And then I did end up getting a call, and I went over there to audition John's Garage. Is that right? Yeah, in the Hollywood Hills. Cool. And, uh, you know, I got the gig. I was playing Credence tunes in a garage. It's like, who hasn't done this? <laughs> right. Everyone's done that John Fogarty wasn't there when they were doing Yeah, exactly. It. <laughs> yeah. My my cover band didn't have John in it too and we were playing some Creedence songs. What were yeah. you, were you nervous? What was that like meeting with him the first time? I wasn't that nervous. I was a little you know, it's nerve wracking to go do something like that. But once I was there, I don't know, once I'm playing I'm never nervous. Once I'm doing my thing, you know, I'm confident about it. So I was prepared, <laughs> you know, yeah. it helps to be well prepared. Yes. Did you have some songs? And I, I just, yeah, they gave me kind of a list of songs okay. that, that might come up, but I just learned all the hits just in case, True. you know, the first three I played were like old fifties rock tunes. Cause that's what he loves. That's what he grew up on. Yeah. People you play with. I'm like this too, as a friend, when people are working for me, yeah. I like that. They, I want them to like what I like, not just learn my songs. Right. Anyone can do that. But if they like what I like, you know, where you're coming, this is what he wanted from me. Sure. You know, it's like, do I dig, uh, like, where he's coming from? Yeah. The stuff he loves. Right. And I loved that stuff. Sure. And it shows up in your playing, you know. Yeah. Aside from just learning the guy's songs. Of course. You know? Of course. And you guys were just at, not officially Woodstock, but the 50-year anniversary in Bethel, New York. You just That was your last show of this leg of the gig. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, and, and what, what were the feelings you had of playing in that historic place again? Well, uh, Bethel Woods is a, a shed. They call it a shed. It's one of those indoor-outdoor venues. You know, it's got the roof, but the, the lawn seats, right, you know. Uh and uh, it's on the site of where Woodstock originally happened, which for people who don't know, it was not actually at Woodstock. The town of Woodstock is 90 miles north of Bethel, and it was supposed to be there, and they lost their, the, the town decided against it, so they had to move it really quick. Kind of like this one they tried to put on this year. Right, it didn't right. Out. Yeah. So they moved to the Bethel, you know, the whole story. Max Gasker rented his farmland out. Right. So, so ever since, since, for years, that was, I actually, in 2000, I played this kind of really low budget uh, Woodstock anniversary thing on that site. They actually, Gasker's original barn, they built a, like a wooden stage in front of it at a bunch and it was really muddy people were there standing there with like uh bag you know plastic bags tied around their shoes and all like squelching through the mud yeah yeah it's amazing there's a guy now that that uh, does sound over at bethel woods who was one of the people that put that on and it's amazing i saw him there 
He was like, oh, remember that thing in the mud here? Yeah, I said, yeah, this is a real step up from that. It's the history of mud at Bethel. Yeah. Right? It was great to be there. You know, we played there before. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it, it rained, and they had to delay the show for rain. I'm like, it's just, you know, history repeating itself. Right, right. You know, the funniest thing happens to me is, uh, you know, I once in a while people – come up to me like what was it like to be in credence and i'm like well they, they broke up when i was five i right. don't really you know i don't really yeah. right. i was a bit of a prodigy but no, right. not that much. right yeah exactly that that, that people that don't really be... know the timeline those right. songs are timeless it really and are. they could come from any time right i've played them and they really could be written right now you right. know right which is which is what it's all about you know, and most artists would, would love to have one of those albums. They had three of those albums in one year, which is basically, yeah. you know, John, yeah, wrote crazy. three albums worth of material. And, yeah, and, and a lot of the hits are from that one year. Exactly, right? Just, just cranking them out. Right, yeah. yeah. And any uh, stories from the tour? Because I know you guys are going back on the road in a few weeks. Anything, any sort of highlights or challenges that have... Uh, been part of the tour well, so far not a lot of challenges you know it's a pretty pretty you know the challenges are more you know back, back when i was touring super low budget right. <laughs> you know, right. sleeping on couches i really i really can't look at anything on that tour as a challenge right. but uh you know it's always tiring to be on the road yeah. you know i mean i we we get worn out that was a bus tour because the band was really big and uh it's 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 uh it's wearing yeah and the older you get the more wearing it is mm. like you could really see a bunch of us who are older and we're road dogs and road warriors and we know how to do it and we right. know what it is but there's like some guys on the tour that are in their 20s or early 30s and they're just way more resilient than we are. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. they just don't need a lot of sleep. Right. They don't, they, they just, I'm like, oh, damn, let's, like, you're so perky right now. What's wrong? With, oh, right. yeah, you're 20 <laughs> years younger than me. That's right. what it is. Yeah, makes a huge difference, right? How do you yeah. take care of yourself on tour then, Bob, as far as, you know, getting enough sleep, nutrition, all of that? I try to be good. You know, it's hard. I kind of lack discipline, but. Actually, my friend Trissette has been on this gig, and she's very disciplined about what she eats. And so she's been, hi, Trizzy. She's been, uh, you know, she would just make sure that I didn't do anything bad. <laughs> she's my conscience. There you go. And then she made me walk like a mile with her. You know, That's pretty Got to get our steps in, or we're going to get fat. Right. <laughs> oh, I hate you. You're the worst person on earth. <laughs> well, we played Radio City Music Hall in that trip. Mm. That was uh, that was meaningful because my piano teacher, when I was growing up in New Jersey, it was uh, Ashley Miller, who was the organist at Radio City for years, made all the albums like you know, the the, the Mighty Wurlitzer at, at Radio City Music Hall uh, that were all in Columbia. There was all these records, and he made all those. So uh, amazing! I got to play there. It just it was it was nice. One of the questions, Bob, that we've got on on the feed with folks who are watching, um, talking about being on tour with John Fogarty, talking about what are some of your favorite songs to play with John? Oh, favorite John Fogarty songs. Uh, well, I think um, uh, oh, that one I was playing before, uh, Long See the Light. You know. for me and when, that's my favorite I, I think that's my favorite it's, it's one of my favorites too i love it unbelievable song and then you know we usually hit right off with green river mm. which is another one of my favorites and also uh um he did this the last record he made it was like covers of his classics his duets with other people and he wrote two new songs for him one of them was called uh, mystic highway and that song's amazing. That's one of my favorites, too. And it's like a new, well, it's, I guess that was five years ago, but in the grand scheme of things, a new John Fogarty song. New song, wow. Really great tune. Yeah. They're all, the thing about those songs is uh, they all play 
Like, we don't have to play old-fashioned, you know, we don't have to make believe it's the 60s and play. We just play like a rock band plays now. Yeah. And they sound great. Like, they're just, uh, they just come on. I never feel like I'm playing an oldie show. I never feel like I'm playing old songs. Right. Those songs have no age to me. They're timeless, right? It's the highest achievement to really, to do something, to me, yeah. to do something that is, that, uh, can become detached from its era, you know? Yes. Like, people who are there, there's a nostalgia 60s element right. for them, but I wasn't there. Right. And I didn't have to be there, right? It all still works. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because there's so, new generations of fans every day. Yeah, there's young people that yeah. love those songs. A lot of them don't even know who he is, but they know all the songs, right. you know? Right. We'll play a festival, and it'll be all these people. And we come out, and like, all these people have no idea who this is, but they're about to find. They're about to find out. And we start playing, and they're all like singing along, like I know this song, and then they figure it out. <laughs> yeah, these <laughs> yeah. are these are iconic songs that make so many people happy. It's it's really incredible. What are what have been some of the highlights for you, Bob? Some of the the places that you've played that you saw, sort of just kick back and go, oh, here I am at this. At this gig. Oh yeah. Well, we played. Uh, we just played Red Rocks in uh, yeah. Denver. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. You can't help but be. You feel like you're a tourist on your own gig. You know, it's just so spectacular. And uh, we just played played uh, the Hollywood Bowl. That was a nice gig. And uh, Radio City, we've done a couple of times. We played like the first month I was in the band. We went to Russia. We played Moscow. Wow. We played this festival out in the middle of the street for like 300,000 people. Man. It's crazy. I was still learning the tunes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you pulled and, it off, though. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was a good gig. I don't really remember much of it, except I just looked at, out at the crowd, and it just went on and on. Like, you could see the back of it. 